Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly cabinet session at Gudabia Palace earlier today. His Royal Highness hailed the selection of Maharak as the capital of Islamic culture 2018 by the Islamic Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, highlighting His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's patronage of the occasion ceremony. He added that selecting Maharak as the capital of Islamic culture represents an international recognition of Maharak as a distinctive historic city and as part of a country with a rich culture and heritage. His Royal Highness was briefed on a number of development projects in Maharak that are aimed at further improving government services across various sectors. His Royal Highness directed that the medical project in the north of Maharak be an integrated medical city that includes a long-term care hospital, a maternity hospital, a multiple sclerosis centre and a nursing home. He also instructed the concerned authorities to commence the implementation of the project as soon as the current construction tenders are completed and to keep His Royal Highness updated on the project's implementation. He also directed the Deputy Prime Minister and President of the Ministerial Committee for Urbanisation and Infrastructure to follow up on the implementation of Project SADA, or Happiness. His Royal Highness was briefed on the stages of the Maharak Central Market Project and the Maharak Souk development. The Cabinet also reviewed the developments in Aden, affirming Bahrain's supportive stance towards the Arab coalition led by Saudi Arabia. The Cabinet strongly condemned the suicide bombing in Kabul, expressing condolences to the victims' families and the Afghan government and people, wishing the injured a speedy recovery. The Cabinet reiterated Bahrain's stance, which categorically rejects violence and terrorism. His Royal Highness directed the expansion of the circle of services that technically and logistically support the country's shopping and tourism centres and to make them more attractive to both citizens and visitors. The Cabinet approved the establishment of a National Ambulance Centre under the Ministry of Interior to increase the competency of ambulance services in the Kingdom. The final signature of an air services agreement between the Government of Bahrain and the Government of Brazil was approved by the Cabinet. A memorandum of understanding was approved between the Ministry of Education in Bahrain and the King Mohammed VI University in the United Arab Emirates, with the concerned Minister delegated to sign. The Cabinet discussed a, a memo of understanding between Bahrain and the African Union Commission and viewed the recommendation of the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. 
Finally, three proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives were approved by the Cabinet regarding the development of a media policy to address campaigns that distort the image of Bahrain in international forums, facilitating the establishment of a new airline, and on the study of the phenomena and negative aspects of society based on the recommendation of the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs. The Cabinet also referred to the Ministry of Labour and Social Development a proposal on the municipal fees for unmarried Bahraini women who have no fixed income. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a cable of thanks and appreciation from Saudi Interior Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz bin Saud bin Nayaf bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The Saudi minister paid tribute to His Royal Highness the Premier for his support during his recent visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain, which will continue to enhance joint security cooperation. He hailed the Premier's keenness on expanding cooperation and coordination to reflect deep-rooted ties and consolidated security cooperation in light of current challenges. He said that the Premier's keenness on the importance of strengthening security cooperation would be taken into consideration and implemented in order to serve joint interests and bolstering security and stability. The Saudi Minister praised His Royal Highness the Premier's statementship and deep grasp of challenges, praying to Allah the Almighty to protect him and bless Bahrain with security and stability. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and in the presence of His Highness's sons, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa and His Highness Sheikh Hamad bin Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The events of the first day of the second week of the Young Hunter Educational Programme, which is part of the Nasser bin Hamad competition for falconry and hunting commence. His Highness Sheikh Nasser highlighted the support of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa to this heritage and other traditional sports. He also affirmed that the activities of the program will benefit a large number of children, adding that the participation of his sons reflects the keenness to support all participants in this event. His Highness hailed the wide participation and the success of the first week of the programme, which reflects the parents' keenness to preserve this important national heritage. He commended the efforts of the organising committee, headed by Khalifa Abdullah al Ghoud, and all trainers wishing them and the participants success. Participation in the second week of the programme's activities has exceeded more than 100 participants. The programme will continue until next Wednesday with its various activities, including horseback and camel riding, falconry and shooting, amongst other activities. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa represented His Majesty the King in Muharraq's celebration as Capital of the Islamic Culture 2018, held by Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, the BACA. Deputy Premier took pride in the selection of Muharraq as Capital of Islamic Culture 2018 by the Islamic Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which comes in recognition of its rich cultural diversity, genuine heritage and history, in addition to its significance as a long-time hub for political, cultural, trade and economic activities. 
The Deputy Premier welcomed the guests of the celebration in Moharag, which was historically once the capital of Bahrain. He pointed out the city's strategic location on the east coast and the Pearl Trail, which is registered on the UNESCO World Heritage List. He also expressed appreciation for the efforts of the BACA President, Sheikh Ameh bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, and staff in accentuating Bahrain as a tourism destination. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities organized in Arad Fort the celebration of Muharraq, capital of Islamic culture of 2018, after the kingdom was chosen by the Islamic Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, which affirms Bahrain's rich cultural diversity, heritage and history, in addition to its significant and enhanced status. The idea behind uh, choosing uh, Muharraq to be a capital of Islamic culture for this year uh, was uh, in the context of the program that uh, has been designated and uh, supervised by ISESCO, which is the program of uh, Islamic cultural capitals. And Muharraq has all these uh, privileges and, and specificities and enabled uh, Muharraq to be chosen as a capital for Islamic culture for the year 2018. The aim of the event is to present Bahrain's tradition as a regional destination that will be further enhanced throughout the events planned till the end of this year, in addition to promoting the culture and heritage of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The event we saw today was the opening inauguration ceremony of Muharraq, capital of Islamic tourism. This is a very important year for us here in Bahrain. We celebrate Muharraq with its rich heritage, with its rich culture, uh, through a series of events that have been planned um, throughout the year. Many of the events that have been uh, planned for this year are directly linked to our Islamic heritage. These exhibitions are an important milestone into uh, promoting the diversity of Islamic heritage throughout uh, the world and we do encourage people to engage with these activities and these exhibitions uh, that will allow them to have a better understanding uh, of, uh, of Islam as a religion, not just in terms of religion, but in terms of the, the culture and social practices associated with all these communities that practice Islam. The event showcased a number of artistic programs, including a film showing an artistic representation of Muharraq, musical performances, and a show embodying the enlightened values of the Islamic faith. 
The event gathered a number of senior officials and honored guests who expressed pleasure in participating in such event. We have to understand the meaning of culture today because in today's world, in a political sense at least, the term Islam and Islamic culture has been so distorted that we need to bring it back to reality. We need to bring it back to what it truly is. And today was a beautiful opportunity to do that. Muharraq is considered the home of many architectural landmarks and ancient artifacts that pay testaments to the heritage of the city and its historical importance. Muharraq, the capital of Islamic culture of 2018, the honor of the title reflects the cultural and historical depth and the heritage of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamid Youssef. Following the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa during the Government Forum 2017, which was held last October under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, government officials held a workshop at Isa Cultural Centre that focused on policies, legislation and enhancing. The meeting was led by the Deputy Prime Minister Jawad bin Salam Al Rayad and saw the introduction of 10 key policies and 33 initiatives. A series of coordination meetings, including two last week, were held to inform today's workshop, covering key priority areas for the upcoming Government Action Plan from 2019 to 2022. Commencing on the outcomes of today's workshop, the Deputy Prime Minister highlighted that the workshop represents the commitment of the government to ensuring a prosperous future for Bahrain citizens. He went on to highlight the role of modern regulatory frameworks in supporting the government's strategic goals of accelerating sustainable economic growth and delivering promising opportunities for citizens. During the workshop, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali al Noemi, outlined five key policies identified during the workshop. He added that these policies will drive the implementation of 20 initiatives that aim to increase efficiency and productivity across government, encourage creativity, reinforce principles of accountability and transparency, and utilize modern technology and strategic planning. The Minister for Shura Council and House of Representatives Affairs, Khanam bin Fadl al Bawainin, also highlighted five key policies aimed at advancing legislation in accordance with international best practice across policy areas, including civil rights, justice, and female empowerment. He added that 13 initiatives will be launched under these policy areas, supporting the delivery of efficient governance and effective social development. The third workshop on public services and environmental protection is due to take place in February under the leadership of Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. Fruitful discussions and great collaboration in the workshop of the legislative themes and government performance resulted in the approval of 10 policies and 33 initiatives which represent first and foremost the future government aspirations aiming to fulfill achievements that impact citizens in all aspects of their lives and at all levels. Big step forward in enhancing the performance of the uh, government uh, at large and the ministry uh, in specific. It will lead for sure to the increase of the productivity of the uh, employees and taking into consideration that the role and the services need to be uh, reviewed regularly. Strengthening the laws and legislations that will affect the women and the handicapped and all the, uh, the parts of the community that needs to be assisted. Today's meeting was a review of the outcome of the coordination meetings held on the basis of the views that have been completed based on the received initiatives, executive agreed upon actions, policies and future projects by the ministries and government entities related to the legislative themes and government performance.
workshop has achieved significant results regarding the uh, government route and the legislative route. Uh, both routes will be submitted to the House of Re uh, Representatives uh, to explore the governmental program in the forthcoming years. We are all here on the same um, uh, path, on the same agenda, working towards one single target, which is the, uh, the citizen. And I'm sure that this will really make a huge difference to the future of Bahrain 2030, or even, even beyond that. Great efforts are still devoted to developing the government action plan mechanisms and priorities to establish a solid cornerstone to match Bahrain's economic vision 2030, laying the foundations for economic prosperity and stability. Unity is strength, and when there's real cooperation, wonderful things can be achieved. And when we see the true collaboration in the government forum workshops, we know we're on the right track. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghafoor. The Kingdom of Bahrain has always been a major tourist destination due to its extensive cultural and archaeological heritage, which has contributed greatly to the national economy. More now on the story in this report. The historic civilization of Bahrain and the tolerance and openness of its people are all factors that attract thousands of tourists so they can explore its pristine heritage. The Marine Ports Police Directorate regulates the influx of travelers in cooperation with Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority. Every year, the Marine Ports Police Directorate receives cruise ships at Khalifa bin Salman Port, which arrive on a weekly basis to the Marine docks. The arrival of tourists to Bahrain is a very easy process in cooperation with several government authorities, including the Ministry of Interior. At the same time, the Marine Ports Police Directorate maintains a high level of security and safety, ensuring passengers feel safe, which is the primary goal of the authorities concerned. We at the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority and our CEO, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa, are keen on ensuring the success of the cruise ship season by holding meetings before the beginning of the season with government authorities, including the Ministry of Interior, who show unlimited cooperation. The Marine Ports Police Directorate works to secure the passenger terminal building and the surrounding facilities. It also takes the necessary measures to maintain public security and safety and provide assistance to passengers upon arrival. Yeah, I would like to thank the Bahraini government for the excellent job they are doing. Regardless, anything. It doesn't matter if it's security, if it's how the country runs and everything. There's a reason why I'm here and not anywhere else in the world, because Bahrain is different. Everything works here perfectly. I feel safe. Nothing will happen. We have no criminality. Women here are treated like goddesses, like queens. We don't have that in Europe, you know. So there's many advantages of this country compared to anything else. Bahrain, we saw a lot of police and securities and we are feeling really safe so I think that's that's good and the weather's nice <laughs> as we came, came here to Bahrain. This organizational process is carried out in a framework of effective partnership between the Nationality, Passport and Residence Affairs, the Directorate of Seaports of Bahrain Customs and the General Directorate of Traffic to facilitate the arrival and departure of passengers. Gulf Air Group holding company Bahrain Duty Free Shop Complex and Bahrain Airport Company signed major agreements that aim at developing the basic shopping services of the duty free in the new passenger terminals at Bahrain International Airport. According to the agreement signed between the three partners, a new joint project will be established named Bahrain Duty Free Company. The Minister of Transportation and Communication and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Gulf Air Holding Group, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, and Chairman of Bahrain Duty Free Shop Complex, Farouk Al Moyed, signed the agreement that will grant Bahrain Duty Free Shop 55% of shares, whilst the Gulf Air Holding Group will own the remaining 45%. As the authority concerned with managing and the operation of Bahrain International Airport, the Bahrain Airport Company and Bahrain Duty Free Shop Complex signed a concession agreement for a period of 15 years with Bahrain Duty Free Company.
Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and let's start with the local stocks as Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,344.54 points, marking an increase of 2.22 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks. Investors traded mainly in the services sector with 47% of total shares. 137 transactions included 9,061,772 shares worth 1,250,710 Bahraini dinars. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Tourism, His Excellency Zaid bin Rashid Al Zayani, affirmed the continuation of the ministry in implementing a strategy of the government and Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. He stressed the keenness of the ministry to facilitate all procedures related to attracting and settling regional and global investments. This came during the regular meeting of the Capital Club, which hosted Minister Zaid Al Zayani as a keynote speaker in the presence of a large number of members of the club, of senior business men and officials in the business sector in the kingdom. During his speech, Azayani touched on the economic developments in the kingdom and the initiatives launched by the ministry during the last three years. In addition to the achievements of the ministry for the year 2017, the sectors of trade, industry and tourism.